Now, with the Walgreens and the convenience vertical more broadly, DoorDash is getting into another very competitive space where you have well-capitalized competitors like Instacart and Amazon that also, you know, have a lead on you guys. So what's the message you're trying to get out to investors, particularly as you guys get ready for an IPO in an environment where we've seen investors respond more to profitability than growth over the last year or so? Yeah, we're, we're super excited today. Maybe I can start with our collaboration with, with Walgreens, what we're announcing today. You know, it, it is, uh, it's going to be fabulous. We have uh, 2,300 items that will be available to DoorDash's uh, customer base. We cover about 100 million Americans. So this, this will bring, for the first time, Walgreens products in over-the-counter medicine, uh, grocery and household items, and other categories that are totally appropriate for this uh, you know, COVID crisis that we're in. The other thing to note is that while we're starting with 2,300 items, we're gonna rapidly grow that to 5,000 items. So essentially bring the entire Walgreens store to your door on demand. So that, that's, the, that's the key thing. One of the things we did in, in COVID is we shifted into going beyond restaurants and focused on empowering local economies by bringing thing, other things that people want to be delivered to their home. And Walgreens is a perfect example of that. We're going to ramp uh, to cover all of their stores throughout the coming months, and that'll, that'll touch 100 million uh, Americans. That's, that's, that's a huge announcement today, and we're thrilled to be in a collaboration with Walgreens. Certainly, and it's a good time for it as we see that demand soar in the COVID era. Um, but Christopher, again, just want to get your thoughts. You're going against some uh, pretty strong competitors in this space, Amazon and Instacart, uh, that have been boosting up their capacity over the last few months in particular. How do you plan on competing in this space? You've also got the food delivery side increasingly going into convenience and grocery. Yeah, one thing that's true of this space, Deirdre, is it's been competitive since, uh, since day one. And one of the things that I believe strongly that sets DoorDash apart is that we're not focused on our competitors. We, we've been focused on our customers. So it's one of our core values of, of DoorDash. And that's one of the key reasons I believe we have a market share lead in, in, in food delivery in the United States. And so we're going to continue to focus on that. This is, you know, uh, the core, core to us is listening to our customers, being merchant first. You know, our original vision was to empower local economies. And so the, you know, the idea is we want to connect every local business to every local consumer. And that that's a very different a strategy than just broad e-commerce, right? That is that is making these businesses successful that are around you and me. And that's what sets DoorDash apart. And I believe it what will continue to set DoorDash apart. Right. And especially because you guys over the last few years have gone into the suburbs, which I know has been um, a competitive advantage and let you guys increase your market share. Now, I want to ask you about the action that we have seen in the food delivery market. Uh, Grub going to just eat takeaway. Postmates will go to Uber. Is this a net negative or a net positive for you? And what happens next? Is more consolidation needed? Yeah, this is such an early uh, early days in this category. You know, we're we're not focused on what our competitors are doing, and I I think that's the right that's the right strategy for us. And it's you know we won't rule out potential acquisitions. You know, we we did a caviar acquisition back uh, late last year that's gone incredibly well. But our our focus has been on helping our merchants thrive. With a you know great example of that has been what's happened with COVID nineteen. You know, I, you, you may know that we you know, swung into action back in March and April and designed a program called Main Street Strong. This, this exemplifies what I mean by Merchant First. We built a program that, that generated $120 million in relief for merchants to keep them on their feet. One stat that I love to share is that restaurants that were on DoorDash during this crisis were four times more likely to make it through the first wave by being on the platform. So that $120 million in relief took the form of commission. It took the form of promotion to drive sales to the small businesses. And so we will continue to focus on our customers, our merchants, our dashers. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think that is what is, is key right now. We're not going to be bothered by what other companies are doing.